Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of anatomy. We are doing head and neck anatomy and today's topic is going to be posterior cranial fossa. So again to get you into the orientation, if this is your skull and if we cut the skull like this, so ye upar ki jo cap hai ye nikal jayegi and this is what we call the vault of the skull. Under obviously brain nazar aega and if you also take out the brain, then what you see is the base of the skull. Aur jo base of the skull hai, it is divided, uh, agar isko aap upar se dekh rahe skull ko and remember vault is removed and brain is removed. So what you see is the anterior cranial fossa, then the middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. So already we have discussed anterior and middle cranial fossa hai, and today's topic is going to be on the posterior cranial fossa. So this is the largest and the deepest of all the three cranial fossa hai, because it harbored the big, you know, uh, hindbrain and cerebellum and pons and medulla. So all these structures are, you know, if you look at the diagram of uh, posterior cranial fossa, there's a big one, you know, it's the biggest and the deepest. Also, it contains a very, very big opening, which is called foramen magnum. This is where, uh, you know, the brain is connected with the spinal cord. Its boundaries kya hai? Anterior boundary will be exactly the same as that of the um, you know, posterior boundary of uh, middle cranial fossa. Posteriorly, there will be squamous temporal, uh, squamous part of the occipital bone, and on each side will be mastoid part of temporal and mastoid angle. So remember these boundaries, guys. This is important because exam may cranial fossa may last me push thing. Piche consi bone contribute kar rahi hai, lateral sides pe consi bone contribute kar rahi hai. Doi to chize pushte hai fossa hai mein. Ek yeh ke boundaries kya hai, aur dusra uske contents kya hai, usme openings consi hai. Thik hai? Ab agar floor ki baat kare, to median area mein there is a sloping area behind the dorsum cella, there is a big foramen magnum and there is a bony structure, occipital bone ka squamous part. Uh, and this is very easy to understand. So if you look at the diagram, there is obviously the big, big, big foramen magnum in the middle. There is an anterior part and there is a posterior part. So that's the middle area of posterior cranial fossa. That's what it talks about, the median area. Lateral area, if you talk about it, you do openings in this area. There are uh, occipital bone, hai, uh, petrous temporal bone, hai, mastoid temporal, mastoid angle parietal bone. So different bones are contributing there, no openings. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, some other important features of posterior cranial fossa. Uh, if you talk about the median area, the cli the clivus is the sloping surface in the front of the foramen magnum. It is formed by the fusion of uh, different bones, particularly posterior part of the body of his sphenoid. Um, with the basal part of the occipital bone. So that's basically the slope is sloping area ko that sloping area is what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, nothing special. Just remember the name. The foramen magnum lies in the floor of the fossa, and it is a very important structure because yehi wo jagah hai jahan se sara structure higher centers ka spinal cord ke saath connect hoga. Okay, the squamous part of the occipital bone shows the following features: the internal occipital protuberance, the internal occipital crest the transverse sulcus and on each side of the internal occipital class there are deep fossa so basically openings going in here you see there are only structures that you have to memorize or both structures usually but so if you look at this diagram for example this is the posterior cranial fossa and that is the clivus this is the slope just came back right here then there is a big foramen magnum in the middle so ye midden area hai. middle area or this middle area can there you see this uh, bony ridge type of thing which is called internal occipital crest at the back there is an internal occipital protuberance uh, these are all because of attachment of some important structures because kahin pe dura mater attach ho rahi hoti itna strongly ki wo bone pe compression dalti hai so these type of things which you have to remember okay ab agar lateral side ki baat kare to you see the cerebral fossa jisme zare cerebellum fit hoga okay right so lateral area mein ab lateral area is area ki baat kar raha hu theek hai posterior cranial fossa ka ye middle area tha now we're talking about the lateral area let's see what what is there the condylar part of the occipital bone is marked by the jugular tubercle which lies over the again a tubercle is because of attachment of some traction koi na koi cheez attach hai there there is a hypoglossal canal which pierces the posterior post uh, uh, pierces the bone posterior anterior to the jugular tubercle and runs obliquely forward and literally along the line of fusion between the basilar and the condylar parts of the occipital bone. Too much for you to remember, but just remember uh, that you have to remember at least the hypoglossal canal. Okay, I have said that there are many openings to Henny, there are many surah Henny, which you have to remember, but at least you have to remember that. So, hypoglossal canal is the one that you need to remember. It's present on each side of the foramen magnum.
Then there is a condyler canal. It opens in the lower part of the sigmoid sulcus. So again, another important uh, thing to remember, the condyler canal, okay? Now, the point is, हर देखें अगर आप इसको सिस्टमेटिकली स्टडी करें ना बेस ऑफ द स्कल को तो जो तीन क्रैनियल फोसा हैं द एंटीरियर मिडल एंड द पोस्टीरियर सब में आपको सिर्फ बाउंड्रीज याद रखनी है उनके बेस के स्ट्रक्चर्स याद रखने हैं मिडल पार्ट में क्या स्ट्रक्चर्स हैं लिटरल पार्ट्स में क्या स्ट्रक्चर है दैट्स हाउ यू यू रिमेंबर दैम ओके सो डोंट गेट वरीड इट्स ईजी दो तीन दफा को वीडियो को देखेंगे तो बात समझ में आ जाएगी आपकी ठीक है अच्छा पोस्टीरियर सर्फेस ऑफ द पीटरस पार्ट ऑफ द टेम्पोरल बोन फॉर्म्स द एंटेरोलेटरल वॉल ऑफ द पोस्टर क्रैनियल फोसा इनमें जो इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रक्चर है इंटरनल acoustic meatus very important structure obviously because uh, it is all connected with your ear okay so internal acoustic meatus opens above the anterior part of the jugular foramen or uh, if you trace it here we find the jugular tubercle and uh, the jugular foramen is right in there okay so that's the um, jugular foramen and with the jugular foramen is ke anteriorly agar aap dekhe so you see that internal acoustic meatus okay it is about 1 cm long and runs transversely in lateral direction it is enclosed literally by the perforatory plate of the bone called lamina cribrosa ye details agar na bhi yaad rakhe to it's fine the orifice of the aqueduct of the vast bull is a narrow slit line behind the internal acoustic meatus so all these structures which you have to remember so this is the orifice of the aqueduct of vast bull so very small small thing right now the subarcuate fossa lies below the arcuate eminence which connects with the semicircular canals but there is a jugular foramen present here lies in the posterior end of the petero occipital fissure and there is a mastoid part of the temporal bone uh, which shows some important structures anteriorly marked by the sigmoid sulcus uh, just remember the name and try to locate them okay otherwise all other details are not important so you should know at least okay where is the so let's uh, begin this from the very beginning and what you need to know and how you need to remember these things so here we are looking at the posterior cranial fossa and if we talk about the posterior cranial fossa this is the biggest one and this is the deepest one if we talk about the boundaries anterior boundary and the posterior boundary and the lateral boundaries you should know what are the bones which contribute to these boundaries then if you look at the middle of the posterior the cranial fossa the important structures include the foramen magnum the internal occipital crest and the internal uh, occipital protuberance along with the um, some of the ligamentous uh, attachments which you uh, should remember as well and uh, clavus which is the slope of the bone if you look at the lateral side there are some important structures and some foramina which you need to remember bahut sare nahi hai middle cranial fossa ki tarah but uh, some of them which you need to remember the internal acoustic meatus the jugular foramen um, the sigmoid sulcus the mastoid angle of the parietal bone all very important so remember these like uh, aapko locate karna aana chahiye इस पूरे डिस्कशन का पर्पज यही है कि व्हेन वी डिस्कस अबाउट के जनाब जुगलर फॉरमेन से जो स्ट्रक्चर गुजर रहा है तो आपको पता तो हो कि जुगलर फॉरमेन है किधर इफ यू आर जस्ट अनओरिएंटेड एंड डिसओरिएंटेड कि वेयर इज द जुगलर फॉरमेन यू विल बी डिस्टर्ब्ड है ना सो ट्राई टू ओरिएंट योर सेल्फ कि यहां जो भी नाम लिखे हैं वो इस डायग्राम पर आपको पता होने चाहिए दैट्स द पर्पज ऑफ टूडेज वीडियो राइट एंड इफ देर इज फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द पोस्टेड जनरल फोसा इट कॉज इज ब्रूजिंग ओवर द मेस्ट वाइड रीजन extending down over to the sternocleidomastoid so isme koi leakage nahi obviously you see it is not directly connected with air or nasal cavity so like anterior and posterior or orbit i should say anterior cranial fossa mein you see redness in the orbit uh, middle and posterior cranial fossa mein you may see uh, leakage of csf and blood from the nose as well as from the air but yahan pe you see you know bruising and uh, signs of uh, some torture or breakage within or fracture within the fossa at the mastoid level which may also go down to the external cranial mastoid so that's all about posterior cranial fossa we will proceed our discussion on head and neck in the upcoming videos all the very best and if you like the video please subscribe the channel share the video with your colleagues and i'll see you